Welcome in, race fans, this edition of Through the Gears, presented by Front Stretch. I'm your host, Tino Patino, and I couldn't be more excited to get back into the racing action this week as we preview everything that's to come for one of the most craziest races on the schedule from Talladega Super Speedway. And we got to look back on what will be known as one of the most fan favorite victories this season and Chase Elliott getting back to victory lane, ending the winless streak at Texas. Before we do all that, got to give a quick shout out to my man Kyle B8 for tuning into the show last week and commenting and Sandman6298 as well. And another shout out to Mr. Hartman for tuning in and always following along with our picks. I love you guys there and appreciate all the support each and every week. Let's pick some winners in this one as we go through the gears. All right, guys, now for the Texas recap. There's a couple of things I want to get into here. First off, Chase Elliott gets the victory, 12-1 to 1 to do so, that he was. And to me, this is something that I'm very, you know, frustrated I missed out on, obviously with it being Chase's first time back to victory lane within that winless streak that he was having. And I know for a fact that he would have been, you know, of that high value throughout the season if he did not get back to victory lane. Um, and it, that's the unfortunate thing is that he, since he did, we won't see a number as high as 14-1, to 60-1, like we were seeing for Chase at times this season. Now, what we can say is we had, the, you know, the thoughts in mind for the reasoning why we didn't go with Chase. I mean, he hadn't had a top 10 at mile and a half intermediate tracks since 2022 of the next gen era. So to me, in betting on him in that race, it just didn't seem right to me uh, to do that. And he just ultimately beat us. Now, that was the crazy part was Tyler Reddick, our driver who we had outright to win at plus 750, my favorite play all last week. He was in position to win. He was in position to get that one outright. Um, he actually got passed by Denny Hamlin with about 40 to go and then repassed him because that happened with struggles on pit road. And he was in position on the restart with about roughly 30 to go there. And Chase Elliott puts them three wide. Tyler Reddick gets in a bad spot. Ross Chastain actually passes him as well. And from that moment on, he couldn't recover. Reddick had the best long run speed car in the field. Obviously, Kyle Larson dominated early, but once he had the tire actually go off of his car, the entire wheel that was, um, we, he wasn't not able to recover. But Tyler Reddick was there, and he was able to put himself in position there at the end. And that's what I was most satisfied about is we had the right pick at the right moment at the right time. And Chase Elliott was more aggressive than Tyler Reddick was, putting him three wide and ultimately winning that race. So obviously, you know, I know when there's money involved, it doesn't necessarily make things better to be close or almost there. But to me, at least the right picks were in the right spot, like I mentioned there. And Chase Elliott ultimately got it done. As we move forward to betting strategies for Talladega this week, uh, that's the most interesting part is there really aren't any. <laughs> because Talladega is such a wild race you have you can start last and ultimately win the race you can start first and finish last there's multiple big crashes in this one and from the super speedway races so far that we've seen this season in atlanta and daytona this should be a great race and the thing that i have maybe for a strategy point of view is i can really sense an underdog win in this one we haven't really seen an upset winner since eric almarola in early on 2016 2017 there so to me i think at this point point talladega is now due for that underdog winner the the driver that maybe is in a little bit underfunded equipment or not the top ride ultimately winning this one we saw the, this race be dominated by ryan blaney denny hamlin and the likes of chase elliott even hendrick motorsports drivers so i'm really interested to see the value on the board here as we move forward to our odds breakdown but that's just something to note that i think it's going to be an underdog winner in this one and if it is going to be an underdog winner who do we choose from as we get into our odds breakdown, one thing that I thought is important to know, and this goes hand in hand with the betting strategy side of things, and shout out to the team at Win the Race. They presented this on X throughout the week, and this really got me thinking, and I caught my eye when I saw it, was the fact that in 27 of the last 28 races, the winner has started inside of the top 19. So if there's a driver who's an ultra long shot that you want to bet on but he might not qualify inside that top 20 ish number maybe put half your units there and then after he does it put a little bit more on that's the strategy that i'm thinking about throughout the week there but for a driver that you know i'm looking at i think that's something that i'm going to know as i will put place bets now earlier in the week just because of how high the value are is going into this re race weekend with it being you know 30 to 1 45 to 1 number of guys uh, in terms of the odds there okay, so now as we look towards our favorites in this one 
William Byron is first on the list. He is 10-1 to 1 to win this one. Ryan Blaney and Braggsowski followed him as well. So normally what I want to do here is take a look at which out of the three I like best out of these favorites. And ultimately, it's going to be Ryan Blaney because he is the best super speedway driver, at least one of the best, arguably, on the tracks right now. He's always putting himself in position at the end. He's always being aggressive and taking control of those races, too. And that, I think, really makes sure he finishes there at the end and finishes up front winning races. He won at Talladega. He almost won Atlanta by .003 seconds to Daniel Suarez earlier this year. So Blaney has been one of the best super speedway drivers. Now, is that someone I want to bet on this weekend at Talladega? Honestly, no. Because he won last year at Talladega, he's the most recent Talladega winner. It's so hard to win these races back-to-back. -back. I'm going to go off of Ryan Blaney in this one. I just talked about him being the best driver at this type of racetrack. Yes, but that is just for a reason because I think, okay, he got what he was due last time. Now I could see more of Brad Kozlowski, who was in position to win at Texas last week, but everyone else is thinking Brad as well. Out of these favorites, I am going to go with Brad just to have a favorite on my betting sheet this weekend, but I am a little cautious because everyone is thinking him. If it's Brad, it's Brad, it's Brad. May not be Brad, and it may be someone we may not be thinking of. And so let's move on to see Joey Logano, Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch are our next four there. They're ranging from 11 to 1 to 15 to 1. Kyle Busch was the winner of this race last year, and RCR does bring the heat when it comes to uh, restrictor plate and super speedway type of races. But they just haven't really done it for me. It was a very lucky win for Kyle Busch last year as Bubba Wallace and Ryan Blaney were going head-to-head -head in that one. And ultimately, Kyle Busch was the third car in line and was able to sneak through as they wrecked there. So to me, I can't really see that being of value for me this week. One driver who I can see is Ross Chastain, 16-1. He was there at Texas. We talked about it. He had a top five in the bag and ultimately got wrecked by William Byron or wrecked himself. You know, it's up for debate there. But my point is, he'll be aggressive in this one. And sometimes the most aggressive driver, we've seen it with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. sometimes, at these super speedway races, is able to put himself in position to be there at the end because he's not waiting back and getting collected in a wreck. Driver I also want to note, and I, I take this one with caution because he's not the best super speedway driver, is Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick, you know, he may not be that fastest super speed, ways but 22 to 1 for a driver that is a Toyota driver who the Toyota drivers may not have the best sample size in the field as well as they have the least amount of cars but he did win one of his Daytona duels earlier this year it was him and Christopher Bell so that's something to consider is if you are thinking about Tyler Reddick for this weekend do note that he was able to win a super speedway race granted it wasn't for points it was for qualifying but that's something to consider if you're thinking about Tyler Reddick sort of getting revenge in this one this week. Who are my outright winners in this one? Well, let me break it down for you here. First up is Brad Kozlowski. He's going to be first on that list. He's 10-1, to 1, so he doesn't have the best value like we mentioned, but he's a Ford, and the Fords are winless throughout this season thus far. I think they're going to bring a lot of pressure and a lot of power with them this weekend and a lot of pressure to perform. I think they need to go out and have a strong showing. They need to win, honestly. Like, to put it straight, they need to win a race it's coming soon because to be at the 10th race of the year, 25% of the way through the seasons thus far, they need to get a race win soon in order to really build on that program and ultimately show that their new uh, next-gen body style for that car is improving. So Brad Kozlowski is going to be the first pick there. He's got six wins at Talladega. He's due for a win. He's also on a uh, winless streak. So I can see back-to-back -back winless streaks being broken, that sort of storyline for NASCAR. So Brad's going to be one. Two is going to be Alex Bowman, 22-1. to one. And yes, he's the least performing Hendrick, dri Hendrick Motorsports driver in the field, you know, within those four drivers of William Byron, Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott now. But I think that Alex Bowman has been sneakily good this season. There's been times where I bet on him and he hasn't performed. But aside from that, he was second in the Daytona 500. Another super speedway race. He lost that by inches. So in this one, at that number of 22 to 1, I can see him qualifying within the top five and hopefully staying there throughout the day. Alex Bowman, the driver I love in this one. And the value is there for the top equipment that he's racing in. Next up is going to be Eric Jones. Eric Jones was a driver I was on heavily for the Daytona 500 because I've been watching him back specifically in these past super speedway races. He's a driver that's always there at the end. And aside from that, he is always, you know, making his way through the field strategically, whether it's racing towards the back. And yes, he's in a Toyota this time, but the Toyotas have more cars in the field with Legacy Motor Club, him and John Hunter Nemechek. So that's a bigger sample size. If they do get in a wreck at the end, maybe more drivers will be able to help Eric Jones there um, and, and compared to years past, although he was in a Chevy and everything like that. But I just feel like with 30 to 1, that's a good number for a driver that has, in six out of the last eight races, finished inside the top 10. That's all we can ask for, is a driver that can finish races 
be there at the end. And if a wreck happens, he may have a chance to win this race. Eric Jones, 30 to 1. I love that value there. And next up is going to be the underdog. It's going to be the long shot of the weekend. It's going to be the Cinderella story. And that's what makes Talladega March Madness for a lot of us NASCAR fans. Because if you win, you're locked into the playoffs. And you you have a chance to fight for a championship. And this driver has led the second most laps inside the entire Ford camp this season. And do you know who it is? It's Todd Gilland. Do I expect him to win? No. But that's what makes it a long shot. And that's why I'm getting excited. He's 45 to 1 to win this one. And he's been leading laps consistently throughout this season, not just on super speedway races. At Atlanta, he was leading laps. That's a super speedway race, but he was controlling the field and he was doing a good job of doing so. Sometimes he's been on pitch strategies and cycles where he's been up front leading laps as well. Or restarting inside the top five but even with that I've been impressed with consistently how he's been able to do that and the amount of buzz that has been around him has been less like very little and that to me uh shows the fact that he's no, maybe no one's really thinking about him and if they are well here we go it is the chance for Todd to take advantage in that front row motorsports car they also are now partnered with team Penske we saw the speed they brought to Daytona and the other speedway super speedway in Atlanta like it mentioned so Todd Gilliland 45 to 1 that's going to be my super long shot of the week I also like Chase Briscoe Briscoe I feel like it was uh, worth it to note and mention him because he is less of a Cinderella story since he's already won. But Stuart Haas Racing has not gone back to victory lane for quite some time now since Kevin Harvick at Richmond a couple years back. So Briscoe's been up front running well as well. And I think that can bode well. Obviously, you know, Texas doesn't compare to Talladega, but the fact that he has speed and has been up front there, I think, will hopefully provide a little bit more momentum for them in this one. So if I have to go with those four drivers, it's going to be Brad Keselowski at 10-1, to 1, Alex Bowman 22-1, to 1, Eric Jones 30-1, to 1, and Todd Gillen 45-1. to 1. Bonus pick would be Chase Briscoe 45-1 to 1 as well, as HS SHR could get back to victory lane in this one. Only a few prop bets for you guys in this one because it is Talladega and it's so unpredictable, and that really makes it hard to you know put a lot of money on someone finishing inside the top 10 or the top 5 just because of how many different things into this race in general but first up for some top 10 plays is going to be eric jones i talked about him top 10 and six of the last eight races he's plus 110 i do think that's fair enough value that i think i'm going to take a chance and going to put it would be his first top 10 of the year as well but i think it's worth it here at talladega let's take a look at that noah gregson at plus 160 for a top 10 finish he was racing strong in this race last year, ultimately got into a wreck there because of the little bit of an inexperience while racing up in the front, I think. But to me, for a top 10, for a driver that's been racing well for his first really true uh, campaign, I would say, as last year he was suspended midway through the year, I think this is a true test of the speed he can bring to the table and anthony alfredo this is a long shot top 10 pick but plus 550 he's not a driver that's going to be racing up front i don't think hey maybe we could see it you know a couple times due to the you know draft and the pack and everything like that if he's able to manage his his car to the best of the ability and stay out of trouble but if he's racing at the back and avoids a bunch of wrecks, I think Anthony Alfredo at plus 550 for a top 10 finish is something you should take a look at. It's going to be my favorite play of the week. It's going to be Todd Gillen to finish as the top forward in this race. He's 18-1 to 1 to do so, and I'm really high on the Toddy G to go and get this one done. Obviously, he may not be able to go out and get the win, but I think he can definitely be one of the top four drivers to put himself in position and be there at the end. And I'm interested to see how many laps he could lead or if he can just be inside the top five when it matters most maybe a wreck happens takes everyone out and Todd Gillen is there at the end 18 to 1 is a great number for a driver that has led less led laps the second most laps in the entire Ford camp so I'm willing to put my money on that at 18 to 1 right now I would bet on that now early in the week before the number goes down after qualifying all right guys that'll do it for this edition of through the gears a little bit of shorter one this weekend because all right, guys, and I'll do it for this edition of Through the Gears. A little bit of a shorter one this week just because of Talladega being the monster that it is, but I'm super excited for this week's race. I think there's been a bunch of great super speedway races in Daytona and Atlanta that we've seen with this next-gen car, and I'm super excited to see if there is an upset winner in this one. Be sure to stay tuned to the Stock Car Scoop after the race to get all your post-race coverage, stats, and analysis from our guys at the Front Stretch team there as well. You can follow Front Stretch at Front Stretch and the Front Stretch Podcast Network to stay tuned for more shows like Through the Gears and others that get you amped up, hyped up, ready to go for the race weekend. You can follow me at Tino P-A-T-T-I-G-N-O as well as I'll be posting more NASCAR betting analysis and insights all throughout the week. And I'll see you guys next week as we go Through the Gears.